Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2019. Brought to you by Dell Technologies and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in Las Vegas of Dell Technologies World. I am your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my esteemed co-host, Stu Miniman. We are joined by Caitlin Gordon, she is the VP of Product Marketing at Dell EMC, and Munib Minazuddin, who is the VP Solutions of Product Marketing at VMware. Thanks so much for returning to theCUBE. You guys are veterans. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. So we're going to talk about the VMware Dell EMC storage portfolio. It is better together, which sounds like it's a theme for a political campaign. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> Let's walk our viewers through, give us some examples of how, how you are jointly coming up with solutions. Yeah, I'll start if that's all right. Go I think ahead. that um, a lot of what we've seen is that the Dell Technologies Cloud strategy is such an important thing about what we're talking about today, but what we've also seen is that when we're looking to use the cloud, external storage is an important part of that strategy. So what we've already done is we've collaborated together to validate VCF with both Unity and PowerMax. Um, and that's really the beginning of our journey together, to enable that external storage to be part of the workload domain, to have SDDC manager, not just manage the, the other parts of the infrastructure, but to manage external storage, and that you can have that resiliency and performance for those workloads that need it, those kind of uh, high value workloads that need it. And that's really the beginning. We, we think it's going to get much broader, much deeper integration as we continue to work together. Yeah, and I think uh, you know, it's a continued theme in our solutions as you know, Caitlin was pointing out. Again, you know, what's most important and what's customers want out of this and their evolution of you know, workloads which are very data center centric and you know, client server architecture with a very you know, specific you know, infrastructure design application, shifting towards more you know, cloud native and public cloud hybrid applications. So that has a different nature of storage requirements that got to evolve from you know, block storage, file storage, object storage, that evolution needs to happen and that only happens better together with VMware and Dell EMC. So, yeah. Yeah. so Caitlin, I, I think back to this is the 10th year we're having the cube here at what used to be EMC World, and it used to be you talked about VMware and storage, and it was, okay, let's go through the integration points that we had, and EMC would say, we're you know, as good or better than everybody out there, and yeah. check all the boxes here. There's a shift today when we're talking about, it's not just working with it, but you know, integrations of products, really, it looks more like joint solutions. We know on VxRail there's you know, joint development that happens on, so, but give us a little bit about, about that, that difference about you know, 2019 storage with Dell EMC and VMware versus the past. Yeah, and there, there is a shift, right? We're, we're here together. Absolutely. <laughs> and our teams, our product management teams, organizations are coming together, they're spending a lot of time together collaborating on what our strategy is together, how do we best approach that so we can bring solutions to our customers that provide that level that Dell Technologies can really provide that no one else can. And it's truly something unique and differentiated and what we're talking about today is really just the beginning. There's a lot more to come on that front. And you know, I think also the integrations in the past where I would call them API interface driven, now like you point out, it's co-engineered, uh, starting with the solutions like VxRail, Cloud Foundation, and the co-engineering makes a big difference because we're sharing roadmaps. We're sharing, hey, what are we thinking about performance? What are we thinking about you know, application requirements? And that's very different to just, I'm going to partner with you, I'm going to pass some APIs, you're going to call some APIs, and, and that has an impact on like, you know, ready solutions, right? Uh, it's just Cloud Foundation, a full stack with lifecycle, SDDC manager, that kind of integration only happens with co-engineering. To talk a little bit about, about the partnership and th this better together. I mean, we, we talked about the products and the solutions, but I want to hear about the cultural, uh, the cultures of, of the two companies. We know, I mean, they're both technology powerhouse, both technology optimists. Um, how would you describe the different cultures and how, how you can reflect each other and collaborate with each other? in different ways. You want to start with that one? Sure, I think it's uh, it's very interesting coming from you know West Coast, software, agile, you know, uh, we're like, hey, uh, we'll, we'll have VMworld in a few months, but you know, we're still from a software agile world. We're coming up with new services for VMworld. We're not defined yet. And then working with you know, Dell EMC <laughs> folks who are you know, already looking at performance, infrastructure, planning. So the, the roadmap alignment of you know, every three months I'm going to come out with software innovation, whereas you have to make, put a lot of thought process into how to do this, it's actually had been quite interesting. You know, it's, I'll call it interesting because it was tough. 
it was tough initially to kind of figure out how do you kind of you know bring a cohesive roadmap where you were making 12 months you know uh, you know infrastructure investment and roadmap to three months of software cycle. But I think it's actually come together really well. Yeah, um, and at the end of the day, we're we're talking to the same customers and we're we're solving the same problems and in a lot of ways. The, the kind of legacy Dell EMC side has come from the infrastructure from the bottom up, and then the VMware kind of has come from the top down, and bringing those two together, um, although our development cycles have a different kind of time span <laughs> against them, we're trying to solve the same problems for our customers, and that's really where a lot of those innovations are going to continue to come. Yeah, w one of those interesting points you talk about from the bottom down and the top, uh, bottom down and uh, bottom up and top down. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long day so far. We forgive uh, you, we forgive you. You know, the, the new waves of technology, you know, remember back to you know, when Flash rolled out, it's, there were things I needed to do the infrastructure layer, and there's stuff that happens on the application side. We are seeing a real renaissance in what's happening in the storage industry, think about talking about NVMe, storage class memory. It's not just, okay, I have some new gear and I have to redo it, but you know, it dramatically changes. You know, we're getting rid of the SCSI stack when you talk about the application side. So, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear how this it comes together and you know, what's in the product today and how, how you're developing these yeah, together. Yeah, another in interesting example that almost crosses those two is uh, Cloud IQ. So Cloud IQ is something that we've developed in-house. It's an agile developed software application that is a cloud native app developed with Pivotal, uh, runs on a Dell EMC cloud. That's run out of our side of the house and it came out actually with Unity three years ago today. Um, we now have that not just across our core storage portfolio, but we have that now with VM health insights as well, where we've actually taken that approach where we can give give that impact as well. And I think that that just shows you kind of how we do have those pieces of culture too coming together and trying to bring these solutions together. I know, and I think again, you know, thinking customer first, right? We talk about this, you know, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud environments where people are taking their workloads, they compute storage, networking requirements, and they're trying to migrate their workloads back and forth. But you know, there's a more important part of the workload migration is also the data migration, right? So how do you take, you know, data migration and, and look at different data sources, look at your database, Look at your, you know, different kind of data uh, migration, uh, and that's where you know storage is so critical. It's easy to take a snapshot of a workload and move it across, but then if you have to pin it on a, a very seamless data migration path, you have to have really clear storage strategies which will support your, you know, hyperconverged, your hybrid cloud, your external storage strategies that you got to map to that migration path. Yeah. Yeah, and a service that we're going to announce tomorrow is started to kind of address that too. Of like, how do you combine some of the public cloud compute and the agility of that with b using these native array-based replication to get the data there, right? And combining not just that simple data movement, but having that application awareness and that application consistency, yeah. which is so critical for things like disaster recovery, which is one of the main things we certainly hear from our customers. How do I use the public cloud as my DR site? They don't want to run their own disaster recovery data centers. Um, and and shape of customers of all shapes and sizes are really going there, and something that we're announcing tomorrow is another example of that. So we'll talk more about that one tomorrow, but we've got some more news on that one as well. So in talking about the trends in, in, in cloud, we know that it's a multi-cloud world, it's a hybrid cloud world. You were just talking about the different ways in which customers want to do their work and the different places they want to do it, public, private. What are, what are some other trends that you're seeing and, and what do you think we're going to be talking about in the years to come on this? Sure, like you know, I think the, the traditional workloads is breaking out into two things. One is, do I migrate it to the cloud? And the second is I'm rewriting the application to be more cloud native. And it's not the entire application. And it's a classic example. I'm sure all of you do mobile banking, right? And guess what? And I've worked with a lot of financial companies who are doing this. It's a really cool cloud native mobile application where I'm doing all my mobile banking. But then my query goes to a mainframe in a banking ledger, <laughs> which is still you know, where your you know, banking ledger is maintained. And then pull through uh, you know, a three-tier application through a web and database tier pushed out to the cloud and accessed by a cloud native environment. Where I'm coming at is even though it looks very modern, a lot of customers are maintaining this computer history museum which all these apps are scaling through. <laughs> and that's not going away in our lifetime uh, because you know, there's a lot of complexity in there and it's really how we help our customers in the journey to pay off their technical debt and move over to newer technologies, be it cloud, cloud native, and get a clean start. You know, if you're a startup, you don't have all these technical debt, 
But unfortunately, a lot of the large companies have these technical debt, and how we help customers, because they're really lost. They're like, I don't know what to do. There's so much coming at me, and they need the help. And I think that's where the power of Dell Technologies comes together in giving them that journey. Yeah, and the bank is a really good example. We have a customer who's ex exactly that example, where everything from the mainframe that runs all their transaction processing that they've always run to their mobile applications all run off of a PowerMax. And, and part of this journey for them is that they absolutely need that infrastructure, but they also need to simplify their operations as much as possible. And having one platform to consolidate all that on is true in banks and governments and hospitals around the world. And I think that that's part of where we see a lot of this pull of how do I get that cloud experience, but how do I still use that infrastructure that I have? Yeah, Caitlin, everybody's trying to squint through the, the new announcement of the Dell Technologies Cloud there. And what does this mean to the storage people? Yeah. You know, what storage is underneath that? Uh, is that something that they see it? Will they recognize it? I was wondering if you can help uh, yeah. eliminate that some. Yeah, and, and some of this will be a little clearer too tomorrow as we talk through a little bit more of the details, but if you think through, um, the Dell Technologies Cloud strategy essentially has two parts. The Dell Technologies Cloud announced today and then the Dell Technologies Cloud Enabled Infrastructure that we'll talk through tomorrow. So the Dell Technologies Cloud, what we announced today, essentially has two different uh, um, flavors announced today and then one that we kind of said where we're going in the future. One is the Dell Technologies Cloud Platform, which is essentially the VxRail infrastructure, um, and that's that first offer. And then there's the Data Center as a Service, the VMware Cloud on Dell EMC. The third one, which was only mentioned quickly today, um, is that validated design. So that's leveraging our best of breed three-tier architecture, including storage, with that, v, uh, the term that Jeff used today was VCF ready, right? It validated with VCF. That's with Unity and PowerMax today. Again, that's the beginning, but it, you can picture what we're doing with validated design is really enabling uh, us to offer our three-tier architecture, best of breed across all three tiers, um, and, and leveraging VCF for that lifecycle management, et cetera. And again, it, it's giving customers those choices to say, do I want to keep and maintain my, modernize my infrastructure, uh, or do I have, you know, and this is the trend shifting where hybrid, you know, people will be talking about that, it's just the, the trend shifted only in the last couple of years, when hybrid men shut down my data center and go to the cloud. Now it's really kind of gone two way. <laughs> the streets changed from not just going from data center to the cloud, but also coming from cloud to the data center. So the interesting challenges become about not just taking the requirements of your, you know, client-server architecture and migrating it to a, you know, elastic cloud architecture, which is also taking that elastic EC2, you know, Azure environments and landing them into your data center environments managed as a service. So comes with, that comes with its own challenges, but that's where customers want it to be. Because, you know, they're going, I've built so much IP natively in my cloud, applications that I've built over the years, now I have a need for it closer to my data center or my users or my edge, and I really need to bring it back and that's you know, having challenges from a storage perspective. Now, they were not designed for client server, they were designed for cloud native elasticity, so I got to build storage architecture that supports that. That's right, yeah. And I think the other piece is that, and we'll talk some about this tomorrow, but this Dell Technologies cloud enabled infrastructure is, is kind of a, um, the other side of the coin, where we think about Dell Technologies Cloud, that's really transforming into a cloud operating model, and you're purchasing the infrastructure to really transform that, but a lot of our customers want to use the cloud for very specific use cases. They want to replace tape, and they want to archive to the cloud, right? So we have the capabilities, and we'll continue to invest in capabilities of simply moving data from your on-prem infrastructure into public cloud, converting into object and putting in there, so you make the cost profile, and you can maybe finally get rid of tape. I think I've, for 14 years, been trying to get rid of tape in the industry, I haven't gotten there yet. Um, but then there's things like offering your data services, storage and data protection data services in a cloud, software so defined assets in the cloud or even as a service consumption of our infrastructure. So again, more, more on that tomorrow. And then there's the, how do you manage that infrastructure and the data itself, having that visibility on that, and that's really that kind of cloud data insights piece of that. So that's really the, the cloud enabled infrastructure piece is really about getting to how do I leverage uh, the cloud for disaster recovery, for archiving, uh, for analytics, that type of thing. So we're, um, a lot of the things we'll talk about tomorrow more focus on those types of use cases as well. Well, you've given us a lot of tantalizing tidbits about <laughs> what we're going to hear tomorrow, so thank so you. So now you have to tune in. We, abs <laughs> we, will, we will be here. Oh <laughs> you better be here too. I know where to find you. <laughs> Caitlin Muneeb, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. This was great. Thanks. Thank you for having us. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. We will have a lot more of our theCUBE's live coverage of Dell Technologies World coming up in just a little bit.